Western analysts say the Russian military is falling short. We went through dozens of videos from the first six weeks of the war in Ukraine to see what they show. And we saw evidence of expired food rations, aging military vehicles, tanks without fuel, and plenty of other surprising details to support that. The expectation was that the Russian military would do quite well, but so far they don't seem to be very, doing very well at either the tactical uh, or the operational level. Most Russian forces have retreated from Kyiv, but some Western powers are still wary of what Putin has planned. Russia remains a premier uh, nuclear power. So where are the Russians falling short? And what new information have we really learned about their military? Mark Kansian is a retired Marine Corps colonel and an expert in military operations who's been studying Russia's military since the Cold War. Russia has been involved in several conflicts in the past decade that made its military look powerful and efficient, as well as ruthless. <laughs> this time, things haven't gone as Mark expected. The Russians have been conducting this operation on a shoestring. In 2014, when the Russians took over uh, Crimea, they did that swiftly and quite effectively. In their operations in Syria, they were brutal, but effective also. So we expected that their operations in Ukraine would be similarly effective. From 2015 to 2020, Russia spent an average of $65 billion annually on its military. In comparison, the United States spent more than 10 times as much during the same period. The Kremlin is first focusing on heavy artillery to shatter cities and break resolve. One thing they're emphasizing, missiles. The Iskander missile, capable of carrying both nuclear and conventional warheads. They've been using it to attack deep targets in Ukraine. Uh, it has high precision. Russia said it had 136 of these types of missiles in 2019. They have a limited inventory. What it indicates is that the Russians are using all of their capabilities in this conflict, even a relatively scarce and important capability like Iskander's. We also asked Mark about Russia's cruise missile inventory. The Russian cruise missile inventory uh, tends to be on the older side. The Russians don't have a whole lot of them. This is a 3M54 caliber, which gets launched from sea to land. Cruise missiles fly like unpiloted aircraft and are typically precision, uh, guided. This missile landed at a bus terminal in Kyiv. Mark says the model came out in the 1990s and has been continuously updated. But this armored vehicle he can identify right away. It was found just a few miles from Kyiv. This is the Vodzdika self-propelled artillery. It looks like a tank, it's not. One of the main differences is that this has bigger guns and can shoot at higher angles than a tank. This rocket system, called GRAD, was first developed in the 1960s fires 40 rockets up to 25 miles. These are unguided. They can be very effective against troops, but they're also very dangerous for civilians because they spread out and they're not very accurate. It's certainly one reason why you're seeing civilian facilities being hit. It's hard to know which weapons caused which damage, but scenes like this show that civilian targets across Ukraine have been totally destroyed. We've learned the Russians have a wide variety of drones, including this one, a Russian Orion drone. This appears to be a reconnaissance drone. It seems that the drone is locating the target and another shooter is attacking it. And that would be tremendously helpful for the Russians because they have not been very good at reconnaissance so far. They've been frequently ambushed and surprised. But Russia does have about 300 modern combat aircrafts positioned within range of Ukraine, including the Su-34, with its double tail that helps it change direction at high angles. Russia deployed it in the northeast of Ukraine. It's a relatively modern aircraft. It can be a fighter, it can also drop bombs. The Su-24, on the other hand, is old. The Su-24, it's a swing-wing fighter bomber. It can fly low, can fly fast. And interestingly, it's used by both the Ukrainians and the uh, Russians. And you can tell that it's a Su-24 because it has the single tail. 
But experts say Russia has limited quantities of precision-guided air weapons. Years of combat operations in Syria have depleted their stockpile and may mean that most aircrafts have only unguided bombs and rockets. Another reason why the Russian Air Force has fallen behind is because their pilots have about 120 hours of flying practice a year, a lot less than their Western counterparts. So experts say they are struggling to use their complex aircrafts in a conflict zone. But Russia says it deployed the new KH-47M2 Kinzhal missile for the first time in this war, when it blew up a big underground arms depot in western Ukraine. The Russians claim the Kinzhal can hit a target up to 1,200 miles away and that it's hypersonic, which means it can fly at five times the speed of sound. It's also capable of carrying nuclear warheads. And while Russia has not used nuclear weapons, it has carried out drills with its nuclear forces, like the one seen here in video released by the Russian Defense Ministry days before the invasion. Mark says there's more to come from Putin's army. They're pulling in additional forces. We're also seeing more air activity, uh, more drone activity. But the Russian military has some issues. Soldiers have been leaving significant resources behind on the battlefield. Take supplies, for example. Here, Ukrainian soldiers found a field full of abandoned Russian tanks. And in this video posted to Twitter, we see Ukrainian farmers towing Russian armored vehicles. Same thing here. Why were they abandoned? It's almost certain that they ran out of gas. If they'd been captured, you know, they probably would have shown some damage, but we, on most of them, we don't see that. They're also using unencrypted communications like smartphones and push-to-talk radios and tree branches to conceal their vehicles, like in this photo posted to Twitter by Ukraine Weapons Tracker. Another issue for the Russian military? Food. Look at these expiration dates. The rations expired in 2015. Two-thirds of enlisted Russian troops are volunteers, and the other third are conscripts, which means they were forced to enlist. Russia requires all male citizens between the ages of 18 to 27 to register for conscription. But experts say conscripts often have poor training and low morale. There have been multiple reports that Russian soldiers have refused to follow orders and even walked away from their units. So high-ranking officers moved to the front lines instead and were exposed to attacks. So far, Ukraine says it's killed at least six Russian major generals, an unusually high total for senior officers. The Kremlin has acknowledged only three of their deaths. Still, Russia is a much bigger force. It has 850,000 total active duty troops. That's four times as many as Ukraine, which has approximately 200,000. We've also learned about the message the Russian military is sending to its own citizens tied to the symbols that show up in these videos released by the Russian Ministry of Defense. These are ZILs, standard heavy trucks the military has used since the Soviet era. What sticks out here are the Zs on the trucks. Z seems to be the most common, but we've also seen V and a couple of other symbols. The Ukrainians say they designate who the vehicle belongs to or where it comes from. What is interesting is that the Z has been taken up by Russians to show support for the war and people sporting Zs and Zs appearing in a variety of venues. Like this image of a Russian gymnast sporting a Z on his chest. I think you're probably going to see more of it as the Russian government emphasizes the nationalist elements of the conflict. The Russians have said that it stands for to victory. And Soviet flags are making a comeback. It harkens back to the days of the Red Army, which was much larger and victorious in the Second World War, which the Russians called the Great Patriotic War. It also harkens back to when Russia was a superpower and resonates with Putin, who looks back on those days with nostalgia. But in this war, the losses are quickly racking up. Ukraine claims to have killed more than 15,000 soldiers. But as of March 25th, Russia had admitted to losing only 1,300 troops.